Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on vectors and projectiles. The topic of this video is representing vectors with scaled diagrams. And here's the two questions we wish to answer. How do you determine the magnitude and the direction of a vector from a scaled diagram? And how do you draw a scaled diagram to represent a vector's magnitude and direction? Let's get started. A vector is a quantity that has both magnitude and direction. In a previous video, we focused up on the topic of the direction of a vector. And in that discussion, we talked about the counterclockwise from east convention for describing the direction of a vector that is not along one of the normal coordinate points of a compass. Now, when we talk about the counterclockwise from east convention, what we're doing is we're expressing a vector's direction in terms of an angle measure. The angle measure is the angle that that vector has been rotated counterclockwise from east. So we call east zero degrees, and then we measure the angle counterclockwise from east to the vector, and that angle measure gives us the direction of the vector. In the animation you see here, you'll notice that there's several vectors of varying directions, and their counterclockwise from east direction is identified. In physics, quantities can either be vectors or scalar quantities. Both of these have a magnitude, but only a vector has a direction. When it comes to magnitude, we mean numerical value, or amount, or quantity. For instance, a force vector could be 25 newtons, or 50 newtons, or 100 newtons, or whatever newtons. These represent the amount of force, or the quantity of force. When we represent a vector by an arrow in a diagram, the length of the arrow is related to the magnitude of that vector. In physics, we often represent vectors by a scale vector diagram. You might be accustomed to the concept of a scale from maps. A scale indicates the ratio of the distance on the map to the actual distance along the ground. An example of a scale might be 1 inch equal 100 miles. In such an example, the inch represents the distance on the map, and 100 miles represents the distance along the ground. When we have a scaled vector diagram in physics, we have to use the scale to convert the measured length of the vector in the diagram to actual real-world values for the magnitude of that vector. For instance, here we have a velocity vector drawn to the scale that 1 centimeter on the diagram is equal to 5.0 meters per second velocity units in real life. If we measure the length of this vector, it comes out to be 7.0 centimeters. Using the scale, we can convert this length of the vector to the actual magnitude of the velocity vector. It turns out being 35.0 meters per second. To determine the magnitude and direction of a vector on a scaled vector diagram, you need a ruler and a protractor. Take the ruler and move its end so that it's at one of the ends of the vectors, and then measure the length of the vector off of the ruler. In this case, it comes out to be 8.75 centimeters. Use the scale to convert to 175 miles as real world, world units. Then take the protractor and move its origin to the tail of the vector. Read off the protractor the direction of that vector, in this case, 326 degrees. Here's another example. You need two things, a ruler and a protractor. Take the ruler and move its zero point so that it's at one of the ends of the vectors. And then measure the length of that vector. And once you do, use the scale to convert to real world units. In this case, it's about 5.74 centimeters long, and that comes out to be 287 kilometers. Then move the protractor so that its origin is at the tail of the vector. Read off the protractor the value for the direction, in this case, 217 degrees counterclockwise from east. We just saw how to use a scaled vector diagram to determine the magnitude and direction of a vector. Now we're going to learn how to draw a scaled vector diagram if we're given the magnitude and the direction of a vector. There's five simple steps, and the first step is select a scale. Choose one that's big enough that the vector is visible and one not so big that it actually extends beyond the allotted space. Second, write the scale down on the sheet of paper. Let everybody know what it is. Third, mark a starting location for the, or for the beginning of that vector. Plan it out. You want the vector to fit in the allotted space, so try to figure out should you start at the lower left side of the page, the upper right side of the page, where are you going to start to draw this vector? And then mark that starting location. Fourth, Mark a reference point for the, for the direction of the vector. Take your protractor and set it down 
it's such that its origin is at the starting point. And then measure around the perimeter of that protractor until you get to the indicated direction and mark a reference point right there. Fifth and final step, get a centimeter ruler out. Line it up such that the zero point of that ruler is at your starting point and such that it's aligned right through the reference point. And then draw the vector to the appropriate length in the indicated direction. Let's do an example. I want to represent a vector that is a velocity vector, 22 meters per second magnitude, 155 degree direction, in this allotted space. So I'm going to begin by deciding up on a scale. The scale that I'm going to use is that one centimeter is equal to two meters per second. This will allow me to draw an 11 centimeter long velocity vector that fits inside of this allotted space. So now I'm going to try to decide where am I going to put the starting point of the vector, the tail of the vector? So I think about what 11 centimeters will be, and I think about that uh, indicated direction of 155 degrees, and I decide on a starting point down on the bottom right side of my allotted space. I like to put a cross here there. That's where the tail of my vector is going to start. Now, I put a protractor down such that the origin of the protractor is right there at the cross here, and I measure around the perimeter to 155 degrees. I put a dot down. This will be my reference point. Now I take my centimeter ruler and I line the zero point up with my starting point, and I align it through the reference point, and then I'm going to mark the 11 centimeter point along the ruler. I'm going to draw my vector from the starting point through the reference point to that end point. Now that I've drawn the vector, I'm going to put an arrowhead on the end of the vector. That arrowhead indicates which way the vector is heading. Now, I like to label my vectors. First, with a direction. I like to put that down at the tail of the vector. It's 155 degrees counterclockwise from east, so I show that on the diagram. And then somewhere along the length, I like to label the magnitude of the vector. In this case, I use the 22 meters per second, the real-world magnitude of that vector. Well, we've done it. If given a scaled vector diagram, we now know how to determine the magnitude and the direction of a vector. And if given the magnitude direction of a vector, we now know how to draw a scaled vector diagram. So at this time in every video, I'd like to give you an action plan, a series of next steps to help you out to make this learning stick. But before I help you out, maybe you could help us out. If you like the video, could you press the like button, maybe even subscribe to the channel. And if you have a question or comment, please leave it down below in the comment section. Okay, now for the action plan. At our website, we have a section called Physics Help Section. And one of the pages there is called the Direction of Vectors page. But it's really about more than just the vector directions. It's all about scaled vector diagrams. It's a great follow-up to this lesson. The second little help piece that I could give you is we have a concept builder section at our website. And students love concept builders. And this one will help you indeed with the idea of the direction of a vector. Try our vector direction concept builder. Finally, we have a written tutorial at our website. And it's a great uh, reference and follow-up to this lesson. You might want to check out our chapter uh, called Forces in Motion in Two Dimensions. Dimensions, and it's lesson one that's all about vectors, vector direction, and vector operations. Be great follow-up. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck.